This is a battery. This is a huge battery. This, well, this is fried fish. But this, this is a water battery. All of these things, even the fried fish technically, store energy and the energy can be released when it's useful to us. The water battery uses gravitational forces to store energy. This battery uses electric forces to store energy. Without them, the rapid development of mankind over the last century would not have been possible. If we can make things in excess and use them when we're ready, we can better ourselves in ways that just wouldn't have been possible. The agricultural revolution allowed us to make excess food and that led to huge human development. And now the technological revolution is doing the same thing. And it's all due to energy. In this case, electric energy. Welcome to Flip Physics. Today I'm going to talk about electric energy. Where there's a force, there's work. And where there's work, there's energy. Work, we said, was a force causing something to move a distance. If you apply a gravitational force over a distance, like this, you release gravitational potential energy. And if you apply an electric force over a distance, for example, releasing this charge from this charge plate, you release electric potential energy. The reverse is also true. If I do work on an object, raising it above my head, I've given it gravitational potential energy. And the energy will be released when I let go. And when we move this charge from the place it's attracted to, to a position further away, we give it electric potential energy, and that electric potential energy can be released as and when we need it. When I let go of the ball, gravity did work on the object. It applied a force making it fall a distance, which we'll call the height h. The force of gravity, as we know, is mg. So the work done by gravity is mgh. Or in other words, the energy transferred, the work done by gravity, is equal to the gravitational potential energy it had when we released it. We can create a similar equation for electric forces. The electric force isn't equal to mg, instead it's equal to qe. Charge instead of mass, electric field instead of gravitational field. It's basically the same equation just for electrostatics. And if that charge has been moved away from the thing it's attracted to, a distance d, that means the work that will be done when that charge is pulled back towards the thing it's attracted to is going to be qe, the force multiplied by the distance d, qed, which as well as being the work done is also equal to the electric potential energy the charge q has. But there's another equation for this. You know how in gravity there are two equations for the force of gravity? Well, there are also two equations for the electric force. They look like this. If when we calculate the work, the force times distance, we use this equation instead, we get that force equation times d, one of the d's cancel, and that leaves us with an equation for the electric potential energy due to the separation of two point charges. So the electric potential energy that two point charges have relative to each other. Just like how in gravitational forces, this ball has gravitational potential energy relative to the Earth. And the reason that only works for point charges is because the force equation we use only works for point charges. Whereas the F equals QE equation is a general equation that always applies. So the electric potential energy is equal to K Q1 Q2 over D. No D squared this time. As we'll see in the next video, all these electrostatic equations have an equivalent in gravitation. There are even some equations here that we didn't use in gravitation, but they're still true, they still apply. But there's one more quantity, one more equation that we actually only tend to use in electrostatics. This quantity is called potential difference or voltage. This is a nine volt battery. There is a potential difference of nine volts between the two terminals of the battery. Then when you connect a bulb to it in a full loop, this potential difference causes the electrons to move around the circuit and light the bulb. Just like how when I dropped the ball, it fell towards the Earth because there's a potential difference between where I let it go and the Earth. That same attraction exists between the two terminals of the battery. The electrons are repelled from the negative end of the battery and attracted to the positive end. Although we don't tend to talk this way, there's also a gravitational potential difference between the point that I release the ball and the ground, which is what makes it fall to the ground. So, what is a potential difference? A potential difference represents the number of joules of energy that each coulomb of charge will carry. Or in other words, how many joules of energy will this circuit provide for every coulomb worth of electrons that go around it? How many electrons is a coulomb worth of electrons? Well, electrons have a very small charge. They have a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That's 0.18016. To carry just one coulomb of charge, you would need 6 million trillion electrons. So a potential difference of 9 volts means that every million trillion electrons that pass through will carry just 9 joules of energy. It doesn't sound like much, and it isn't much, but let me put that into perspective. In the average household light bulb, that's the same number of electrons that pass through the filament in the light bulb 
every two seconds. So how do we calculate potential difference? I said that it was the energy transfer per coulomb of charge. Or in other words, it's the energy per unit charge. Energy per charge, work per coulomb. Work divided by coulombs. Work divided by charge. So it's the energy transferred divided by the number of coulombs of charge that transferred it. We've already said that work done by the electric force is equal to QED. So if we take QED as the work on the top of the equation, divide it by Q, work per charge, the Q's cancel, and we get this equation. Voltage is equal to ED. Voltage, or potential difference, is equal to E, the electric field, multiplied by D, the distance that the charges move. So the potential difference between two points is equal to the electric field in that region, multiplied by the distance between the two points. Here's an example. The potential difference between these two charged metal plates is equal to the electric field strength between the plates, multiplied by the distance the plates are apart. And just like any equation, you can plug numbers in and solve. And we measure this potential difference in volts, or if you prefer, joules per coulomb, because it's the energy per coulomb. Be sure not to get electric potential energy mixed up with electric potential difference. Though similar, they are two different things. Electric potential energy is measured in joules, it's literally the total amount of energy. Whereas electric potential difference is the energy per coulomb of charge. The water battery I showed you, otherwise known as a dam, uses exactly the same principle. There's a gravitational potential difference between the top and the bottom. When you release the water, you release a certain amount of energy per unit mass. This is the potential difference. Instead of energy per coulomb, it's energy per kilogram. And now that we know how to store energy, all these things are possible. Even when the ultimate source of that energy, the sun, goes below the horizon, we can still watch this YouTube channel and learn all about our marvellous universe. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. If you like this video, you can press the like button. You can also subscribe or go to the flipphysics.net website. But most of all, don't forget to leave a comment below with your questions, thoughts and suggestions. Until next time, keep questioning. And of course, if you want to become an expert in spacecraft repair, the first step is learning as much as you can about physics. If you don't believe me, just ask any of these guys.